Good morning. Back in the shop this morning. Uh, it's Monday morning. This past weekend, uh, we had some extremely cold weather. Uh, the thermometer in my car read that it was a minus nine degrees, which is it's just absolutely crazy for Oklahoma. Uh, good thing about Oklahoma cold is it usually doesn't stick around long. It starts thawing out. But this week, it's supposed to get up into the 60s, so we'll be wearing shorts before the weekend's over. On the last video I published, which was part one of the Canvas Back series, uh, I just showed some basic shots of cutting out the cork bodies of the canvas back, uh, outlining the, the pattern on the bottom board, cutting out tail inserts. Not a whole lot of detail or not a whole lot of uh, uh, real specifics about what I was doing. And then I promised in this video I would show uh, a little more uh, detail. And also I'm going to cover some things about some of my band sawing techniques. Um, every once in a while I catch myself doing things that aren't necessarily the, the smartest thing so far. Uh, I've been blessed that uh, I haven't had to pay for those uh, lapses in judgment. But uh, uh, I want to cover some things just so if people see it they don't think that I'm just routinely uh, doing things that are unsafe. So I want to talk just a little bit about bandsaw safety. I want to also explain how I make a pattern, uh, what a pattern represents uh, before you cut it out because if you start with a bad pattern or things that don't jive up in the different uh, components of a pattern, uh, you'll have something that you just absolutely won't be able to correct in the carving process. So we'll cover a little bit of that. Uh, you can hear the cows are bawling. They, uh, they want fed. So I'm going to go out and do that and then I'll come back and uh, we'll start doing some of this stuff in detail. One of the first things I want to point out is sometimes uh, you may see in the video that I'm uh, cutting items and, and stock out with this guard way up like this. That's primarily because it, if you, when you cut, when you cut thick cork, it's good to have the guard right down in here. For one thing, that limits uh, the amount of area that your hands can accidentally get into the blade. Uh, but then moving back and forth between different thicknesses of stock, um, sometimes I forget to put it down, and uh, shame on me for that. Because truthfully, you should basically set your, your guard up to where it's just barely going to clear, and then once again, that, uh, that limits. Uh, I can't even touch the blade right there. I mean, I can nick it, but that's about it. So that would, that would help keep me safe. So if you see me doing that, routinely I, I remember to do that. Periodically I don't. Uh, so uh, if you see me doing that, uh, it's, it's not a common practice. Next thing you want to do is your uh, glide blocks keep the blade uh, from uh, a lot of lateral movement. The uh, Sometimes if you don't have them just right, they may actually get out here and get into your teeth since your teeth are offset, the, uh, the, the set in the blade, uh, which means the teeth uh, are, are angled to the one side or the other alternatingly, and uh, the, that's what actually creates the kerf that allows the blade to flee freely uh, pass through the cut. But if, uh, if you have your glide block set too far out, uh, you'll actually get into your blade and you can knock the set out of your uh, your uh, band saw blade. So make sure that's that's done right. Also, your thrust uh, blocks uh, are basically what the blade runs on in the back and you want that to be just off of the back of your blade and uh, that way that uh, when you when pressure is exerted on it, it the blade doesn't have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, movement. You have a similar set of uh, uh, bearings and uh, glide blocks down in here and they just need to be adjusted as well. Periodically uh, you'll see me reach inside the bandsaw like this and even uh, grab small pieces uh, from around in here. Um, some people may say you know you shouldn't do that. Well you know, the back side of this blade, I, I, I fear it no more than I fear the back side of a knife. Um, I know what I'm doing, and uh, like I say, I, I know that sometimes something might get caught and pull my hand into it, but, you know, by and large, you're safe doing that. You also notice that when I'm doing it, 
uh, I'll always have my sleeve buttoned or secured or rolled up or short sleeve shirt, just something I don't want to get caught in. But reaching through here, it's no issue. Now, if there's anything ever on the front side dancing around by the blade, and I'm just using this big piece as an example, but uh, I'll sh you'll see me shut the saw off. I won't, I won't risk it. But uh, running your hands in like this is absolutely fine. Uh, and it just then even becomes even more imperative that you uh, you drop this uh, this down so that uh, there's there's very little blade exposed uh, even on the front. So if you got something that's this tall and there's, there's just almost no just some, uh, some some tips that uh, you may see uh, while I'm working.